Hello and welcome to episode 122 of the Stress Knits podcast. I'm Stacy. I am the dyer behind Stress Knits Yarn and you can find me on Instagram at Stress Knits Yarn. <sighs> I'm a little frazzled because Eliza unexpectedly took a nap. Eliza is our two-year-old daughter, um, yeah, so she is napping, and so this is a little impromptu, and <laughs> I'm a little flustered because there, the city is chopping down some branches on trees, um, on our little lot, and they also chopped down part of my favorite tree. Which makes me so sad. I can see it out of my office and it turns this bright fiery orange red during the fall and they basically just like chopped off the half of it because they're putting up a new telephone pole. <sighs> it's fine. But one of our trees, so if this is the tree, they took that off. Like all of this is gone. It looks so stupid. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm just a little all over the place, and Eliza's new schedule is a little intense. Um, she's that's Esther, our dog. Um, she is waking up 5 30, 6 o'clock, and not going to bed until 10, and hasn't been taking naps. So it's been, <laughs> it's been an interesting time, but it's okay. Um, just learning, learning how to deal with the new schedule. So bear with me, but I have some projects to show with, to show you a new cast on and a future cast on once I finally bind off one of these projects that I'm working on. And I also have a pumpkin cream cold brew. That's what it's called, but I get it without the vanilla syrup. It's really good. Yes. Also, if you hear chainsaws, that is just, I'm going to close the door and see if that helps. I feel like I close the door every episode. We'll see if that helps, but, um, if it doesn't, we'll see if any of this is usable. <laughs> Okay, so works in progress. I <laughs> I really thought I would have a finished object for you this week, but I got distracted by an old whip and some new ideas for a cast on. So <laughs> here is my dotted raised shawl by Stephen West. I am knitting the large size, but I don't know I'm just moving all of the post-it notes and chapstick out of the way. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the full, I think it's 17 wedges. So I'm about to start wedge 16 and I'm going to play it by ear if I want to do the final wedge. Okay, so I love this so much still. And my new green jacket came in the mail because my old one is way too small. It's from college, <laughs> does not fit anymore. And I haven't had a green jacket since then. And so I bought myself one because they're my favorite. Anyway, I <laughs> wrapped this around my neck. Um, sorry, notifications. I have to surround my neck with the jacket on and it's going to be perfect. It's exactly, it's turning out exactly how I wanted. Also, my chair is squeaky. <laughs> I have to put some WD-40 on it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's huge. So like I said, um, I don't know if I'm going to do the full amount of wedges. I might cut it one short simply because I'm 5'2". And this is already on a 60 inch needle, which is my wingspan. Um, 
yeah. So I'm hoping this balances out a little more with the final wedge. If not, I might knit um, the full amount because I want it to be a little more balanced on the bottom. But I am, I'm really short, so I don't need a huge shawl, but I love a big shawl. And I just, I'm sorry, my chair is so squeaky, it's so distracting. I'm going to sit on the edge of it, so I stop. Okay. Anyway, so that's where I'm at on my dotted rays. I think I'm showing you the wrong side. I was. Yes, so I am using Stress Knits Yarn, which is my hand-dyed yarn company in Eloise, this beautiful pink. Dried Lavender, which is a new purple. Both of these colors are from the 2019 Advent Calendar. And then the final color is Dahlia. And this color combination is just everything to me. And I'm so glad a lot of you love it as well. Um, I am going to talk more about yarn and kits and all that stuff at the end of the podcast. So if you're not interested, you don't have to watch it or sit through it. Um, but if you are interested, I would stay tuned to the end for information about that. But yes, I am so happy. And I had an update with all three of these colors and quite a few of you grabbed this color combination. So I'm hoping that you are going to knit a dotted rays as well, or maybe make a stripey sweater or something like that. I think it's just a really great color combination. Um, I was playing around with the idea of a dotted rays knit along, but I am not going to lie. I I'm a little bit behind schedule with where I want to be with advents and shop dyeing right now. So no knit alongs just yet, um, but I fully support you knitting one. If you want to blame it on me, blame it on me. If you want to blame it on Caroline of Dunder Knit, blame it on Dunder Knit as well. <laughs> Sorry, Carol. <laughs> I love you. Um, yes, so... I just, I really, really love it. It's a beautiful shawl and it's drapey. I also wanted to mention because I have a super tight tension at the moment, I went up to a size US 7 needle. It calls for a US 6, but because my gauge is so tight and I wanted this to be really drapey and beautiful, I went up a needle size to accommodate my gauge. And I really love the fabric that it's making. So I'm really glad I did that. I really cannot get enough of this shawl. And picking it up and touching it makes me want to knit on it some more. So this will get picked up this week and maybe will be around my neck next time. The next pattern or project that I've been working on is my pink velvet. I'm so glad I picked this up. So I'm not going to lie, I have been on the fence about whether or not I loved this pattern, but I just needed to work on it to fall in love with it again. I cast this on because I saw this color combination. It's Dahlia again, but on my singles base with palm lines on my cloud base, which is a Surrey alpaca silk. And once I saw this color combination, I was like, I have to do it. So I cast it on. And my thing was, if it doesn't fit or if I don't like the way it looks, it was just a shop sample and it's going to be great. But I tried it on and I really like it. I really do. So I feel like I'm going to actually wear this, which is exciting. And my hair is so long. Mm. My, pardon my hair, by the way. Mm. Um, I haven't had a haircut since July 2019, so, um, yeah, I just, I really love it. I think I'm going to wear it a lot, and I was about here the last time you saw it. I'm on the ribbing. So I knit about ten and a half inches past the armhole which is two inches longer than the pattern calls for 
and then I'm doing an inch and a half of ribbing and then I'm moving on to the sleeves and I've already put one sleeve on needles just so I can start the, ne the next step of the sweater once I bind off the body which will hopefully be tonight but um, something else has caught my eye. So this is the Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry and it's really great. I'm using um, size six, six needles. Let me check. It might be fives. Okay. I'm using US fives for the body and threes for the ribbing. I really love how this is turning out. I'm knitting a size four, which is a 44 inch bust which gives me zero inches of ease. I'm a little nervous about it but I've tried it on and I think it's gonna be okay and again if not it's a shop sample so we will see how this goes. This will be done soon I hope because I really really love it and I really love <laughs> I love the yoke it's so soft and velvety thus pink velvet right? And can you tell I have a color scheme going? I don't know. But there have been some projects that have been catching my eye or I've been itching to cast on that I've been wanting to cast on for a while. So I, <laughs> I filmed a video for Patreon about my old works in progress and whether I'm going to finish them or frog them. And if you want to check out what projects those are, head over to Patreon if you are interested in becoming a patron. Thank you to everyone who is. It is so amazing to have you there. Um, spoiler alert, I frogged everything. Mm. <laughs> I, was, I was on the fence about a few things, but I ended up frogging everything. Everything. And one of those things um, I had... Um, two colors that I love, which are Rust Belt and Palm Wines. Let me grab my bag of yarn. So these two are from that pro one of the projects that I frogged. If you're a longtime viewer, these might look familiar to you. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I frogged that and then I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a sweater for Eliza out of the My Rainbow mini skein collection. I had full skeins pulled aside um, because <laughs> some of them had mistakes, some of them had knots, um, one of them was really tangled. So I kept them for myself knowing that I love the colors and I'll use them eventually. So the My Rainbow collection is Rust Belt golden hour but I had sunflower so I'm using sunflower instead so rest belt sunflower and I actually might be replacing golden hour with sunflower in the uh, mini skein kits which will be going in the shop September sometime um, and then my jam pillow mint not pillow mint um palm lines and pillow mint so this is my, my rainbow. Now, um, Eliza is my rainbow baby. So I thought it would be really nice to knit a sweater for her with the My Rainbow collection. And so the original plan was to use Palm Lines, the really light, barely there pink, as the main color with really thin stripes of all of the other colors. So. I don't know, like um, 10 rows of palm lines and two rows of the accent color. And then my wonderful friend Candace, who is the host of Pin Feathers and Pearls and is transitory on Instagram. If you're not following her, you should. She is amazing, both as a person and as a maker. And she is just always inspiring me with her color combinations and her projects. And she actually purchased a My Rainbow mini skein collection and knit. 
short shorty socks and she added a color from another favorite human of mine, Lara of Tiny Human Knits. And it's a very similar color to Eloise. And I have 50 grams left over from my dotted rays. And I really liked the really thick stripes. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that instead. So <laughs> I cast on a flax light for Eliza. I'm knitting the two to four year size. I'm using size six needles. I use size three for the ribbing. And this is where I'm at. So I started off with rust belt into sunflower, into pillow mint, into my jam. And then from my jam, we'll go Eloise and then palm lines and back to rust belt. I'm really excited about this pattern. If I love the way it turns out, I might make myself a matching one, because why not? And I know Andrew Mowry is coming out with a, I'm pretty sure it's yoked, which I really love the way her yoked sweaters fit me. So I might knit that because it's a striped sweater. So I might use her instructions with these colors for a sweater of my own. If I like the way that this turns out and I feel like I would wear it, I'm not quite sure yet. It's a little bold, but I think it's going to be perfect on Eliza. And I cannot put this down. I did all of this today. <laughs> this has been my knitting today. I'm almost to the sleeve separation. I will probably get there when I hit palm lines. So I'm really excited. I love this sweater and I'm so thankful Candace posted a picture of those socks because even though I think the short, not the short, the small stripes of color with the thick stripes of palm lines would have been beautiful, I really think this is a lot more fun. So that is my newest cast on. And then once I bind off my dotted rays or my pink velvet, whichever comes first. I am casting on a boxcar sweater by Becky Sorensen, who is Soprano Knits. Now, if you haven't seen the sweater, I'm going to leave a link to the Ravelry page in the description below. I know Ravelry is not accessible to everybody, so I will also put Becky's Instagram handle there as well if you want to check it out on Instagram. It is the perfect sweater. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Telegram sweater. I failed at test knitting it. I bit off a little bit more than I could chew at the time and that's what suffered and I still feel really bad about it. Um but this sweater is the same broken rib pattern and it's a pullover and um sorry Doug was texting me um Doug's my husband <laughs> it is the perfect sweater if I saw it in a shop ready to wear I think I would buy two or three in the in different colors I don't know what's happening. Um, I don't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I am knitting this out of Mountain Mama. I have been wanting to knit a sweater in Mountain Mama. Um, wow, that's... They do not look that different in person. This is why we alternate skeins. These are from the exact same dye lot. <laughs> wow, that's different. Huh, they look the exact same in person. Hmm. That's why we alternate skeins. Same dye lot. Anyway, um, I've been wanting to knit a sweater in Mountain Mama for, how long have I had Mountain Mama? Like a year? Less than? Um, I was knitting it on in Rhinebeck last year. 
so I think almost a year. Um, I've yeah, so I wanted a sweater, and this is the perfect sweater. Maybe it's just a shadow. This is really. <laughs> it's really distracting. They look the same when I put them. Yeah, maybe they are. Maybe it's just the shadow. Anyway, I'm really distracted by that. Um, yes. So I'm going to make the box car by Becky Sorensen in Mountain Mama. Obviously alternating skeins. <laughs> and I am, I went up two needle sizes to get gauge. I did gauge swatch. It's a smaller swatch, but I'm not gonna lie. I just didn't want to knit a swatch anymore. But I got gauge at, um, on a size five and it calls for a size three US. So I'm going to knit it on a size five and I'm going to make the size five as well, which is a 48 and a half. The pattern calls for five inches of positive ease. And I kind of wish there was a size between the 43 and the 48. Uh, because that's what I would be knitting, but I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to work perfectly. I think it's going to be really good. So, yeah, and if it's a little big, I prefer sweaters a little big. It'll be great. I'm really distracted by this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's going to be great. It's going to be beautiful. We will uh, try that soon. <laughs> um, but hopefully I have that cast on by the next time I am doing a video so I can show you what a difference alternating skeins <laughs> makes. It's going to be great. It's going to be so good. And I mean, Mountain Mama is a very tonal yarn, so there are definitely light and dark spots in these colorways. I'm going to keep doing this until I can tell myself that they are the same. I don't know. Anyway, um, that is all I have for knitting. So let's move into a quick shop update section. So as many of you know, there is a yarn shortage because of COVID. It's not a big deal, but it has been very stressful trying to get yarn to keep the shop stocked. Now I've been very lucky and I've been able to get a few bags of yarn for each of my bases except for what don't I have? 50 gram favorite. I have everything else. So because of that I am not accepting custom orders I'm not putting together kits because I have no way of guaranteeing yarn. So I people have been asking for pink velvet kits, but my singles base is sold out and I haven't been able to get any more. I do have a few skeins. I think I have like 20 skeins. So I will put the majority of, I will dye most of those in Dahlia just in case you want a pink velvet that looks just like mine. Um, and I've also had people wanting me to put kits together for the dotted raised shawl. But again, my favorite base is in high demand because it is the best base in the entire world. It is an 80-20. And yeah, it's been hard to get. So I will have plenty of it in the shop um, separately. But I don't, I don't know why I don't like doing kits, but I don't like doing kits and I think it's I don't know I will try to put the colors next to each other in the shop and even though some popular colorways can sell out really quickly they're usually in the shop for a couple of minutes so I promise I will put more in than I did the last update I might double the amount for Dahlia 
dried lavender and Eloise. But other than that, I really can't guarantee anything at the moment because I can't guarantee getting yarn. Um, if there wasn't a yarn shortage, I might do a pre-order for kits and maybe I'll do that in the new year if everything kind of balances out with the supply and if there is enough um, demand for it. So we'll play that by ear and see where we're at in 2021, which feels really weird to say, but it's really not that far away. It's September next week. <laughs> so yes. Also, there will I was planning on having a shop update this Monday, but <laughs> because of Eliza's new schedule, I just haven't had time to die. And by the time she goes to bed, which is around 10 o'clock at night after being up since 5 30 or 6 in the morning with uh, I think she's taken three naps in the past two weeks so it has been a struggle to stay on top of everything and she really doesn't like me being away from her for too long right now so because of that I really need to get advent dyeing done and it's a it's a lot of dyeing so I'm going to focus on that for the next two weeks and see how much of it I can get done. My goal is to be done dyeing by the end of September. And I'm also packing colorways up as I dye them. So hopefully everything will be done by then and I will be able to get Advents out by mid-October. And then life will get back to normal a little bit as far as the shop goes. So that is what's going on. That's all the news. Nothing else is really happening because we're still being pretty strict about what we do right now. Um, we've been getting outside as much as we can. I really wanna walk to my parents' house, which is a mile away. It's, it's 0.9 miles away, it's really close. Um, because they have a pool and we've been going swimming know a lot the past two weeks and Eliza really loves it but we have threats of really bad thunderstorms in the afternoon so I don't know if I want to walk and have that possibility of severe thunderstorms and I want it really depends on what time Doug is getting off of work because he'll come pick us up after work because it's going to get up to 92 today so I don't know we might go swimming or we might just stay home and enjoy the air conditioning <laughs> and maybe some movies if it's rainy I don't know um Eliza's not super into books right now which kind of bums me bums me out anytime I start reading to her she just wants me to stop <laughs> and then she pretends to read to me and then gets frustrated and puts the book down. So that's also been a struggle because that's kind of eliminated something that passes time. So yeah, we're going to see what we get up to. I really hope the rain holds off so we can go swimming because that would be really nice. Yeah, so I'm going to get back to Eliza's flax light sweater maybe pick up my dotted raised shawl while she naps and also get ready to dye some yarn tonight and put this up for you all. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you sometime next week. I'm, I'm a little off. Usually I like to podcast and put things up on Tuesdays, but again, it's really just dependent on Eliza's nap schedule if she decides to nap. So bear with me while I try to figure all of this out and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>